Hello everybody, welcome to the section on completing your project on anomaly detection. In this video, we'll take a look at how to work with cointegration models. Now we've already taken a look at time series to determine whether it was stationary or not. Well, for cointegration, the focus is on whether the spread between two series is constant over time. Null hypothesis states that the spread between two series is non-stationary. If you can reject that null hypothesis, then this suggests that the spread is indeed stationary over time, hence it is cointegrated. So let's get started and head over to the Jupyter Notebook. So for this video, we'll start off by looking at some examples of stationary series with cointegration. And for this very first one, I'm going to take a look at producer price index for two commodities, namely corn and wheat. So I've used data from the St. Louis Federal Reserve Bank, and we're looking at producer prices for corn and wheat for 1982. So I'm going to read in the data sets. I'm going to replace the column name for corn, and now do the same for wheat. And notice that this is monthly data. And I'm going to plot the prices for corn and wheat separately, and then below it I will plot the spread, the difference between wheat and corn. So here you see the plot of the two time series, the actual data, the producer price index of 1982. Corn is in blue, wheat is in orange, and below it is the spread, the difference between corn and wheat. Now I'm going to perform the AD Fuller test. This is the augmented Dickey Fuller test on corn and wheat separately. After that, I'm going to perform the AD Fuller test on the spread, which is the difference between wheat and corn. So this is just a subtraction calculation down here. So we're going to get three results, three outputs. We have the p-value for corn, which is 0.013, the p-value for the ADF test for wheat, which is 0.023, and then finally the p-value for the spread, which is 0.0004. So here we have a situation where we can reject the null hypothesis of non-stationarity. So individually, the time series data for corn and wheat are both stationary. And the spread as well, because the p-value is so low, it's below the threshold of 0.05, we can also reject the null hypothesis and claim stationarity for the spread. So here we have two series that are co-integrated. They are also stationary. The next example is comes from Google Trends looking at the search terms for Republicans and Democrats. I'm going to rename the columns. I'm going to import date time to convert the date index. I'll set the date as index. And let's take a look here. So we have monthly data, the search terms, Republicans, Democrats. So this is count data, integer data. And let's plot the term count separately, and then we'll plot the spread. So this shows the time series data for both Republicans and Democrats. This is count data. Down below is the spread. You can see where the dotted line is at zero. So now we're going to perform the augmented Dickey Fuller test separately for the two series, and then we'll compute the ADF test on the spread. So we have three outputs for the p-values. So here, we're looking at lots of zeros after the decimal point for both Republicans and Democrats. And so we can reject the null hypothesis, and we can claim that the two series individually are stationary. And when we look at the p-value for the spread, it's 0.045. So it does not surpass the cutoff of 0.05. So we can say that the spread is stationary as well. So the two series are co-integrated. They're stationary, and the spread as well is stationary. Now let's look at some examples of non-stationary series with co-integration. So for this, I'm using Google Trends, 
and I'm using the search terms of flour and gluten free. I'm going to rename the columns and again this is monthly data and I'm going to plot separately the search terms. So here you see the two time series data for flour and gluten free. Flour is in blue, gluten free in orange and down below you see the spread. You can see where the dotted line is at zero. Now we're going to perform the augmented Dickey Fuller test and we're going to get three outputs. So here we see the p-values are pretty high for flour and gluten free. They exceed the 0.05 threshold. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis stands and it says that the series is non-stationary. So both time series are non-stationary, flour and gluten free. But let's take a look at the spread. That tells a different story. Here we see the p-value at 0.037. So that's below the threshold of 0.05. So the spread is actually stationary. We can reject the null hypothesis for it. So the two series are non-stationary, yet the spread is stationary. So it is co-integrated. So this one's an interesting case where you can see two non-stationary series, but the spread is stationary. Now the next cases here we have are non-stationary series and no co-integration. So let's go ahead and read in the data. And we have Netflix and Spotify data. This is, we have adjusted closing price data and we will import date time to convert the date index. We're gonna set the index. Let's take a look at the head of the data frame. We have daily data here. Let's plot the prices separately for Netflix and Spotify, and then we're going to plot the spread. So here are the two time series data, and you can see where the spread is below. Notice that the dotted line is at zero, and now we're ready to perform the augmented Dickey Fuller test separately on each of the series and then we're going to compute the ADF test on the spread. So here we have across the board no statistical significance for the p-values. The individual time series data, both series are non-stationary and the spread between the two is also non-stationary. So this case example is kind of like the non-interesting case, but again, this is to illustrate the point of no stationarity and no co-integration. Let's take a look at the adjusted closing price for Bank of America and JP Morgan. So I'll read that in, and notice here that we have weekly data. So I'm gonna plot the prices separately, and then I'm gonna plot the spread. So here, you can tell that the two time series are very close, and so down below the spread is at zero. Where you see this gap right here, you see this spread dip, and then it's kind of a little bit back and forth here, and then a gap, and you notice that it forms this pattern. Then you see JP Morgan's adjusted closing price skyrocket, and so there's this big divergence here. So that's where you see the dip in the spread. So let's import the AD Fuller test and run the test. We're going to get three outputs. And sure enough, across the board, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. All the p-values exceed the threshold of statistical significance at 0.05. So we have non-stationary series as well as the spread is not stationary as well. So there's clearly no co-integration. So that's all I have for you in this video.